The Cleveland Browns did everything they could to make the Cade York situation work out. Basically gave him some forgiveness on his rookie year. But the fact that Cade York could make every kick in practice and could not make kicks within games, it was just too big of a situation for the Cleveland Browns to handle. They traded for veteran kicker Dustin Hopkins. Your latest Locked On Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on the LLB, the Locked On Browns podcast brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day, your host, Jeff Lloyd, ton of new traffic coming in. Uh, Seven Steven here covering the Browns, here for Lockdown Browns. Appreciate all of you who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. And join the everyday crowd by subscribing to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. And, of course, the podcast is always available, always free, wherever you get your podcast. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Teed. Your Cleveland Browns news of the day. Obviously, the big one, and we're going to get to it here in segment one. Cade York will be released. The Browns have traded for veteran kicker Dustin Hopkins from the Los Angeles Chargers. We're going to break that down. Uh, Michael Dunn, uh, a surprise release today. Uh, what does he have in common with Greg Robinson and Kevin Zeitler? We'll get to all of that. Uh, Drew Forbes goes to the non football injury list. And man, for Drew Forbes, as long as he's been here, um, it, it's just been a really, really crazy ride. Um, Wes Martin, if everybody's Remember, Wes Martin was a guy who played, you know, reserve offensive line for Bill Callahan with Washington. His contract was terminated today as the Browns are trying to get these moves in. The Browns practice tomorrow at 3 o'clock. The deadline for having your final 53 in is 4 o'clock. So, obviously, the Browns somewhere either late on Monday or early Tuesday will beat that 4 p.m. deadline. They're not going to go to practice and have people start getting yanked off the practice field. So, we're getting this final 53 and we're getting it soon. Um, the Cade York situation and look, you know, the Browns and you take time, you understand it's a rookie kicker. It's going to take time to, you know, come to get together. Um, obviously he was a guy who, you know, kid, who, you know, kicked in the South, whether it was not an issue that he had to deal with, you know, not wind, all of this stuff, but he just could not put it together in game-like situations. You remember the Charger game last year? Martin Emerson, whatever the Chargers were thinking, um, and they challenged Martin Emerson on a fourth and short. Emerson breaks up the play, a pass intended for Mike Williams. Browns had a chance to pull that game out. And Kate York misses the field goal. I mean, it was you know, a chance to steal something. The Browns had four games in the 2022 season that they lost by three points or less. And, you know, you don't want to say it's all directly put on the kicker, but, you know, kicks make difference. They do. You know, field goals do make differences. And I am one who pushes for two. I am one for, you know, give me touchdowns over field goals all day long. But you got to have that situation where you can make the kicks when they're before you. And with Cade, you know, there is real talk that the Browns, the Browns really think he's going to be a guy that can do this in the NFL. Um, and they were they would seriously welcome him back to the practice squad if somehow he clears waivers. There's teams, Tennessee Titans, do not have a kicker right now. You got to think that they would probably have interest. And to be fair, and what's best for Cade York is probably to go somewhere else, not to come back here. I mean, it's a harder route to come back from the practice squad. Um, but the Browns have this difficult schedule in the first six weeks of this season. And Cincinnati, Tennessee, and of course, I'm sorry, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Tennessee, Baltimore, San Francisco. A missed field goal in any one of these games. Maybe Tennessee's not as good as these other teams, but a missed field goal in any of these games can be oh so crucial. The Browns in this first five game stretch, they have a chance if you know they could go three and two, if they can finish above 500. After that is when the easier part of their schedule comes, and they can kind of run away and hide a little bit. Um, they play one, one division game after week 10. So this first beginning part of the season for the Browns is absolutely critical. And yes, the pressure is certainly on everybody. There's no question about that. But the fact that you have a kicker who was given pressure situations here in the preseason, and this started in Philly. 
um, when he had the opportunity, uh, when he got the second chance after the penalty and, you know, missed wide right and missed wide left, then missed wide right. That's when the Browns were starting to have some doubts. And that's when the Browns were starting to think that even though they have a ton of faith in Cade, they think he's got the leg, out, the accuracy, all of it's there. He, he just can't translate it in the game time situations. Uh, and that's where the doubt started to creep up. Um, and obviously it, it, you know, it continued, of course, you know, you know, after Saturday in Kansas city. Um, and it's not, look, it, and this is just one thing I'm going to say here. Like some of those things I've seen on social media, like you guys get after a guy like Cade York and a guy like Anthony Schwartz. Look, if it didn't work out on the field for him, that's one thing. But like, I never see the same amount of disdain for a guy like Perry on Winfrey, a guy who didn't care, a guy who, you know, didn't show up, didn't give a darn in the locker room, a guy who didn't give a damn off the field. Like I, I can never understand the disdain for guys who it didn't work out for on the field. Um, these guys did everything that was asked of them. Sadly, they just, it, it, it didn't, they weren't able to contribute in the way they needed to, to keep their jobs. But meanwhile, a guy like Perry on Winfrey, who was just an absolute loose cannon nut job. And nobody wants to you know scream and yell about guys like that. But you want to you know, rip on Cade York and rip on guys like Anthony Schwartz, you know, for Cade York, look, you know, this is what obviously the young man has probably set his mind on doing for a long, long time. Um, I don't think the opportunity in Cleveland is a good one. Um, so let's see if he gets picked up somewhere else. Um, you know, hopefully it's in the NFC and the Browns would only have to see him maybe once every four years, except for a Super Bowl, by the way. Um, so yeah, that move is made. Uh, in comes Hopkins. For me, first off, everybody knows I was always a, I've been a big Florida State football fan since I was a child. So you know, having Hopkins here, you know, a little bit of FSU in the house. I'm a little excited about that. I'm not going to lie. Um, almost 85 percent career on his field goals um, was in a situation with the Los Angeles Chargers, competing against a much younger guy, a guy making less money. Um, and you know, Eric Dicker the kicker one out um obviously the browns had been working the phones and like you know i'd mentioned last week the browns were working the phones in several positional areas um so obviously kicker was one of them uh they wanted a proven commodity uh the browns did not want to attempt to play the waiver wire game and certainly with a guy like hopkins it wouldn't have been a waiver wire game it would have been hopkins having to choose them and you know they weren't sure that that would have ultimately been the way it would have went. You know, granted, with kickers, there's only a certain amount of chairs in this crazy kicker world of musical chairs. Um, but they get a guy in here. He's played in. You know, he's kicked in big games. Um, you're not gonna get the leg from Hopkins that you got from Cade York. You know, Dustin Hopkins once he gets about you know at, for that 50 yard range, he's about a 50 percent guy. He is not a big leg guy. He is an you know basically a steady Eddie you know, 45 and in, and I'm okay with that. I, I I think we'll be fine with that, but the Browns can't have a young man whose you know, confidence is wavering come into these huge, huge games for them right out of the box. And, you know, him sadly possibly being the difference that the Browns, you know, lost a game that they ultimately should have won. Um, it's a really tough situation all the way around, but you know, Andrew Barry, Kevin Stefanski, everybody involved, they made the right decision. It was just too risky of a proposition to roll Cade York out here in some of these huge, huge games. We'll see the way you know the Cade York tale eventually continues to go on. But the Browns did what had it to be done, and they moved on from Cade York for the time being, of course, and brought in a veteran here who you know will be ready to go in these situations. Jeff Lloyd, your latest locked on Browns. I appreciate everybody along being along for the ride with me. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Me, my wife, my girls, we love going to live music. We have two great venues with outside seating within about 45 minutes of where we live. But the problem is, is we don't every know when everybody's going to be available to go. So we're late minute ticket buyers and it can be difficult, but with game time with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun that you'll have with game time. My wife and girls were recently going to a show. They had lawn seats. The weather was sketchy. We found a way in, got better seats, got under 
and granted it never rained, but got under in a protected area. So that's some of the things you can get with game time, flash deals and last minute tickets. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Lowest price guarantee, event cancellation policy, job loss protection, Game time really has your back in that type of stuff. Forget planning months in advance. Game team has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find the tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the differences. Get uh, images of your seat before you buy. Soon, exactly what expected when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your email. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Your latest Locked On Browns, Jeff Lloyd. I appreciate you all for making Locked On Browns your first listen every single day. And to the everyday crowd that keeps on growing, invite some friends, get everybody else in here. Make sure they subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. And we're always available. We're always free wherever you get your podcasts. I think we all had the beginning irrational reaction to the Michael Dunn news. And the weirdest thing here, and th there's a couple of ways to play this. Michael Dunn can now be compared to a guy like Kevin Zeitler. How? Well, the Browns years ago, if you remember, and you know Kevin Zeitler had been a guest on Lockdown Browns. Um, Kevin's wife always appreciated you know, what I thought of Kevin, how well I always spoke of Kevin, so we always had a really nice relationship. And Kevin Zeitler was in a movie theater when his wife was thumbing through social media to realize that the Cleveland Browns had traded Kevin Zeitler to the New York Giants. Um, so Michael Dunn kind of gets that treatment. Oh yeah, it was Kevin Zeitler's birthday. Today is Michael Dunn's birthday. Browns put out a social media post wishing Michael Dunn a happy birthday. Then they go and release him. Um, but this is where you get the circling back, so to speak. If you guys remember, and this is when they actually had the Labor Day weekend cut down. So Labor Day weekend cut down. And I remember this fondly because everybody who's been here with me for a while, this is when I was going through all the stuff, you know, obviously, which, you know, when my father was ultimately passing away, the Browns made a deal with Greg Robinson, basing, basically letting him know, hey, we're going to release you, but we are going to bring you back at the time. I think it was 48 hours. Um, the contract that you were on, we're going to, you know, do you a favor. We're going to pay you a little better. Take this bullet for the team um, because the Browns have guys that they need to keep on the final 53 before they can move them to IR. So you have to have some manipulation with your roster so that when you put these guys on IR, you have, you know, guys ready who can jump in those spots. This really seems like what they're trying to do here with Michael Dunn. They could have easily traded Michael Dunn. Uh, the locked on Colts hosts, we joked in messages almost every day, you know, what can we do to get Michael Dunn? What can we do to get Michael Dunn? What can we do to get Michael Dunn? And you know, my thought at the time was he's probably not available until the Browns released him today. Um, but he is not subject to waivers um, due to his time uh, within the league. He is not subject to waivers. So this really smells smells to me like the you know the Browns saying, "Okay, we, you're released. Um, we're probably going to give you you know a little bit better of a deal. We appreciate you for being the good soldier here, but we have to have you know some manipulation here within our own roster because uh, you know whether it's Jordan Kunashik, whether it's Alex Wright." whether it's maybe a guy like Isaiah Thomas. You know, me personally, I would still like to see more of Isaiah Thomas. Alex Wright, 100%, is going to make the final 53 and then most likely go to IR. Isaiah Thomas, questionable. Jordan Kunashik, I, I don't know if I can do it. I, I, I You have other guys that you want to look at. I know they love him. Obviously, you know, Jim Schwartz wearing his jersey, a Jordan Kunashik jersey to practice, tells you how much the defense coordinator thinks about him. Uh, Bubba Ventrone was obviously a guy that got in here, watched the tape from the you know, you know from 2022, and said, well, yeah, if you want to bring Jordan Kunashik back, I'd love to have Jordan Kunashik here and you know, have him part of my special teams unit. But me personally, I don't know. Because, you know, things change. And for Ed, the MCL on Saturday, for Kunashik, it sucks. It does. Uh, because, you know, with any roster, you know, there's always your stars – 
you know, and then there's the, you know, the little guys who get things done. And Jordan Kanash was that type of guy. You know, you'd see him make plays at linebacker and you you'd see him involved in special teams, you know, just a, you know, a no eye in team type of guy, you know, like, let me just do whatever you need me to do. If you're, I just want to go on the field. So if you're going to put me out there, by all means, I'm going to give you everything I got. But, you know, when your rosters are good, when your rosters are better, when you're supposed to be a team that's competing for a possible division championship, every now and then, you know, potential and talent over proven is something you take a roll of the dice on. And, you know, for, for me, the about say, and we're going to get to, you know, where the, the biggest, you know, roster questions are coming up here. I, I just don't know if Jordan Kanashik is a guy that I can risk putting somebody else out and not getting them back. You know, Isaiah Thomas, the Browns have a lot of edges and I like Isaiah Thomas. Cause I think, He's kind of a meat and potatoes guy. He's not this elite athlete. He's not going to kill you. Know, he's not going to you know get, just rack up sack after sack. I think he's a smart, disciplined player who plays within the scheme. And you know those players aren't always the flashiest. They always don't get all the credit. But those are guys that you kind of need to have around. But now this room is so much deeper, obviously, with Miles, with Zedarius, with Ogbo, with the drafting of Isaiah McGuire, Alex Wright. Um, so you know, it's it, you know, all of a sudden again now it's you know, uh, there's not much room, and you know, it's not a big opportunity for a guy to make a roster under those circumstances. So we'll see the way it plays out. But you know, with this and with Michael Dunn, you know, th- it, it's an opportunity. And look, Michael Dunn, and there's a lot of talk that you know, with the money continuing to grow for Joe Batonio and for Wyatt Teller. Me, look, I'm going to pay both of them because I, I think they're, you know, just, I think they might be more important to the Browns and, you know, what they do offensively than necessarily the tackles are. But, you know, everybody's money here is getting a little bit higher. You know, Miles, obviously, Denzel, of course, Deshaun, these contracts escalate. And yes, the Browns can roll it over, of course, but they got to find a way to find every now and then. Every year, most likely, one of these bigger contracts is going to have to go. So if you're telling me next year with Nick Chubb with no contract, if Nick Chubb balls out this year and you know the Browns want to continue this, would you rather have Nick Chubb or would you rather have Wyatt Teller? I don't want to tell you to choose because it's a terrible thing. It's like saying, you know, which one of your arms do you not want anymore? But these are decisions the Cleveland Browns are going to have to make going on and moving forward. So a guy like Michael Dunn, in my opinion, within this Brown system, could start for this team. It's just the fact that he is blocked by two guys who are really, really good at what they do in Wyatt Teller and, of course, Joe Batonio. And Joe Batonio ain't going anywhere. Only place Joe Batonio is going uh, from the Cleveland Browns is probably, you know, follow it up the road with his boy, Joe Thomas, to maybe go to the same place that Joe Thomas went. That is the potential there. So it's been, you know, a tough day um, as far as, you know, th- this, you know, and look, the Cade York news, it's terrible. Um, the, the guy just, it just didn't work out in games. And, you know, how many times, uh, K- you know, uh, Browns practice, Cade York, six or six on his field goals. And just something about that could not translate to game time situations. Once the lights were on, it could not translate to the big moment. And, you know, Granted, his first one, and we'll always have that week one in Carolina, Cade from 58 yards out. And I literally remember watching it as you know, we had the you know the YouTube fired up to a pregame show. And at first when I saw the kick, I was like, eh. and if you remember, there were still pictures like Panthers players like, yeah. And then the draw and boom, Browns won week one in Carolina. It feels like it's a lifetime ago. Um, but, you know, a lot going on here. And this is a completely different Browns roster. And this roster is is expected to compete and expected to win the AFC North and host a playoff game. And you cannot not have a guy out there who's just not ready to go. We're going to continue on here. Jeff Lloyd, your latest Lockdown Browns. Appreciate you all. Stick around. Segment three coming up next. So the questions obviously are, you know, what – are the biggest decisions that are left, you know, a couple moves today. So I guess that puts the Browns probably around 73, 72. Again, I don't have what's going on right this second. Well, pardon me, but I'm going to open up the phone before we close out this episode, just to make sure that we hit on everything and nothing new did drop seven wide receivers. And for me, this is still one I'm looking at. It really, really is. Um, Cause you know, Watkins was a really, really nice story. I understand with Goodwin coming back. It's a, it's, it's a question of what is, you know, I mean, and you have Amari Cooper, you have Donovan, you have Elijah, you have Cedric Tillman, you have Marquise Goodwin, anywhere those five guys are not going anywhere. David Bell, obviously Watkins, 
Bell has played special teams uh, for this team in the past. You know, Watkins is starting to integrate here into playing some special teams for this team. Um, you know, do you find a way to maybe keep seven for now? I, it's it's tough. It really is. Because um, I think we you kind of know where all the other numbers are on the offensive side of the ball here. But, you know, for the Browns, you know, if they want to keep Watkins, I'm all for it. You know, if they let him go, it, it, it's one of those, hey, it could have been nice. Um, it would have been really, really nice insurance. But I do understand those who are saying, you know, well, okay, if we say that, Coop's a lock, Donovan's a lock, uh, Elijah's a lock, Marquise is a lock, Cedric's a lock, then when in the world is you know Watkins going to play? It's a fair question. When is he going to play? He's not going to see many reps if these five wide receivers are all doing what they're supposed to do. And, you know, it's not like he really has a slot inside slot, you know, reputation. Obviously, all those plays that we saw and all the success we saw for them from the outside. You know, David Bell kind of does those types of things. Marquise Goodwin is safe because I think Marquise Goodwin can do some of the stuff we're seeing with Elijah Moore. And just the fact that, you know, the Browns need vertical speed. This team needs speed, period. It's one of the things that's held this offense back over the last couple of years. So, you know, things to consider there. You look at the linebacker room. We know Sione Takitaki's here. We know Anthony Walker Jr. is here. We know J- Jeremiah Wusakoromo is here. But I'm not sure if anybody's truly a lock after that. You know, you have the Kunashik injury, of course, now, which is a difficult spot. Matthew Adams, I got to be honest, I haven't seen anything. And you can tell me how great he is as a special teamer. The Browns play all their linebackers. They only keep four or five. That's all they've really kept. So they play them all. But I don't see anything from Matthew Adams where I say, oh, my God, you know, I, I, I don't see anything at the linebacker position. So I would rather gamble on a Mohammed, uh, Mahmoud uh, Devate that he can find a way to contribute on special teams because I've seen him contribute as a linebacker. You know, I think a lot of people are quick to write off Tony Fields. I think Tony Fields had a really nice summer. I think he's looked really good where now the Browns have confident defensive tackle play where the linebackers are able to basically freely roam and essentially find the ball carrier and just bring them to the ground. The amount of solo linebacker tackles that happened this summer, I'm not saying it was like record-breaking or anything, but it is record-breaking because these weren't plays that were being made in the past when the Browns had piss-poor, incompetent defensive tackle play. So all of a sudden now these guys look a little bit more competent because the system is working the way the system is supposed to work. Defensive tackles are supposed to consume blockers and run. If they don't make the play, that their job then would be to consume the blocking so that the linebackers do make the play, which is exactly what we've seen to this point. So, you know, for all of these guys, and it's tough because, you know, I think they, you know, I, I if I have to, I'll try and keep six. But, I mean, if you tell me I can keep Taki, Walker, JOK, Fields, and Diabate, I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm good to do it. You know, I you know because Kunashik, and again, it's – the only problem I have with Kunashik is the injury. And I have to put somebody else up. And then I have to wait maybe till November for Jordan Kunashik to come back. It's just a tough spot to be in. So another one to monitor. Cornerback, we're done. I mean, it's 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 Denzel. It's G New, obviously. It's Martin Emerson. Uh, it's Cam Mitchell. Uh, AJ Green's going to make this roster, whether you're all ready for it or not. And I think Mike Ford, I think because of the gunner ability. And the fact that this is that part of it's done, you know, Mike Ford will be a gunner for this team. And I think he's in a really, really safe spot. So there, you know, for me, that's your Browns, six cornerbacks. You look at the line, uh, the safety position, um, you know, it's, it, it's in my opinion, it's Hickman or Bell, you know, and are, are the Browns trying some sort of roster minutia to keep both? I don't know. Um, you know I'm not going to keep DeAnthony Bell just because he's a little bit better at special teams over Ronnie Hickman, who was five calendar years younger than him, and there is still potential there. There is still the ability to grow. I can still teach Ronnie Hickman special teams. So for me, you know, I don't see that one breaking that way either. You know, the defensive tackle position, you know, one thing I was, you know, and I mentioned this in the pregame before Kansas City, one thing I was hoping for was, you know, was somebody not named Ika Tomlinson or, you know, Shelby Harris going to step up? Look, I still like Mo Hurst. I, I really do. I, I think Mo, Maurice Hurst, with all the talent that was once in that body, and he's a really, really smart player. He's got really, really good technique. Him sticking would be good. You know, Jordan Elliott, it just seems he's going to make this team. The Browns don't normally eat money like that. Um, But, you know, do you keep five defensive tackles at the end of the day? Maybe you do if you're going to be a light on, you know, a little light on defensive ends uh, for the time being. So, you know, all stuff to continue to watch here. You know, but the Browns, made the move today that they needed to make. 
Cade York. It just wasn't getting done anymore, man. Um, and, you know, I think everybody was probably down on Cade York by the end of last season. Um, you know, and understandably so. You you know, you miss big kicks and it comes to become a really, really difficult spot to be in. Um, sorry if I'm, you know, not looking at the camera here, just trying to make sure I got everything else covered here. Um, and which likes we're good on that front. Um, but the situation was that Cade was just not being able to perform in games. And look, you can be the greatest practice player in the world and you can do everything that's asked of you. But it just became a situation where, you know, the Browns knew how big these situations were going to be. The Browns lost four games in 2022 by three points or less. You look at the wall, the, th the three preseason games other than the Jets game, and what do you see? Inconsistency, and you tied one, and you lost two games all that you should have been in and you probably conceivably could have won if your team could have kicked better and the ultimate was philadelphia eagles and from what i was told when he had that opportunity and it was wide right the gift of god he got a penalty to get five yards closer went wide left anybody who really thought that they were committed to Cade York being a kicker for 2023. That was when pretty much all the confidence, you know, had waned and they realized that they had the, a situation on their, in their hands that they needed to deal with, gave them the one last chance. They didn't really want to bring in a competition because, you know, how do you split that up? They gave Cade the week and as been the script, Cade made every practice kick and he got him out there and, it just the situations just did not translate into success in games. So that's where we're at. Uh, obviously, we'll be back again tomorrow. Uh, bigger one tomorrow as the Browns will get down officially to f their 53-man roster, um, which will be the first of 153-man rosters in 2023. Um so I appreciate you all for, you know, obviously being along for the ride, watching the video here with me, listening along. Uh, I'm your host, Jeff Lloyd. Um, as again, to the newer, newer folks now, this is my seventh season, Cleveland Browns coverage here for Locked On Browns. I appreciate all of you who make Locked On Browns your first listen every single day. And of course, um, join the everyday crowd. It continues to grow by joining the, uh, make sure you subscribe to Locked On Browns YouTube channel. Uh, always available, always free, wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on the LOB. Let's go, Browns.